Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Today I'm in conversation with Lena LeBlanc from Gulf Nova Scotia Fishermen's Coalition. Let's talk about the fishermen coming in from New Brunswick. What have you been telling government officials about it? Well, we've been telling fishermen that transient vessels, which are boats that are coming from other provinces, and that they quarantine themselves or their crews when they come to shed again, is totally not acceptable. Uh, in, the, in the crisis that we're in, when uh, anybody that comes by any vehicle of any kind, except essential vehicles like trucks, have to quarantine themselves for 14 days. And anybody that comes on a plane has to quarantine themselves for 14 days because they might carry virus. What, what makes a, a fisherman so special that when he comes to Shetty Camp, it ties up and can go anywhere in the village and, and not uh, refrain from, from uh, you know, sharing a possibility, possibility of carrying the virus. Uh, we're not, I mean, it's it's pitiful that government has put us in Shady Camp in that position. They should have dealt with this before and not have uh, the community having to talk to fishermen when they come here. There, there, there should be uh, uh, an amendment to the regulation that would state that uh, when you come to uh, any port in Nova Scotia from another province, that should also be considered a, a, a site of an entry. Uh, and, and then uh, the fishermen should isolate, and they don't want to isolate, and then the RCP should simply send them home. The ones that have already come, they came uh, by car, is that right? Yes, uh, the ones that are here, have uh, kept their vessel here on dry land over the winter. And so they drove here from New Brunswick or other areas, and, and they'll come here, work on the boat, and then they'll go back home, back to New Brunswick, and drive God knows where, in the province, and then they come back. So there could be agents that are bringing the virus to our community. But as you know, as a, a large portion of our population are seniors, and they're in a vulnerable uh, section. So uh, to me, uh, we require a special uh, situation that has to be addressed here by the government, and they need to do it soon. And you said that there's also the, the other port of entry, which is boat, right? Well, that, I mean, to me, a, a vessel that comes in from a, in the province is, is making an entry into our province. It's the same thing as a parallel plane, and they should be considered the same. Um, I don't think a fisherman is, is less likely to carry a virus than somebody that comes from other forms of transportation. So therefore, uh, they should be classified and would have to uh, conduct themselves in the same procedure as others. And after you spoke with government officials, what did they tell you? Well, the only thing I heard from the government was what I saw in the news yesterday, that they were not going to change their policy, which is totally un unacceptable for us. Uh, do they have to, do they need to wait for somebody to get sick and then trace it back to a fisherman that came on the boat? Is that what needs to happen? before they take action, or are they going to be proactive and, and, and change their policy and apply something different for a place like my village, which is shared again. I hear that the, the association wasn't consulted about that. It was a surprise for you? It was very much a surprise to us that uh, our association was highly recognized in the fishing communities in, in across Canada, that they didn't come here and while they knew that uh, transit vessels were uh, coming to Shed and they've been coming here years uh, that they didn't come and consult with us. I mean, I even flagged it, uh, I think it was three weeks ago. Instead, we didn't get a reply, which is, which is totally unacceptable. Let's talk about the opening of the crab and lobster season. Any ideas as to when or if that will happen? Well, the crab, I think they're targeting the last week of April beginning of me as a, a potential for opening. They're having issues in New Brunswick with the clients uh, writing safety protocols and putting everything in need in, in place, I should say, uh, to make sure that their workers are safe. And they're having uh, quite a bit of of, uh, of issues trying to, to meet regulations uh, to, you know, to comply and be to make sure that they're um, employees can feel safe and, and comfortable because as you know the employees in uh, I think it, 
Northern New Brunswick asked for the seasons of lobster and snow crab to be closed because they didn't feel safe. So there's a lot of nervousness for plant workers and that's quite understandable. And about the local fish plant, uh, do you think they're going to bring in foreign workers? I doubt it very much. I've spoken to the manager and thus far he's called all these local uh, uh, workers and out of 15, I think there's there's eight that are not coming because they're worried about their health and, and uh, rightly so. Uh, I mean, when they work at plants, it's always damp. They tend to catch colds and then start to sneeze. Then what happens? I mean, they're talking about putting uh, plexiglass between workers to protect them, but I doubt very much that uh, they're going to have the protection that they would require to be totally safe. So you think it might not open at all? Quite possible that it might not open. I think it would be probably offloading and shipping to a, another company to process. You were telling me about a, a petition, uh, a survey that you were going to uh, have for fishermen. Can you tell me more about that? Well, this is in regards to the opening of the lobster fishery, if it should happen at all. Uh, we have been uh, formed a subcommittee and have been dialoguing with PI in New Brunswick uh, to see what possible package we could put together that would fit within the programs that the federal and provincial governments have now and, uh, and see if there was a, an option uh, other than fishing. Because we don't see fishing as being viable. Uh, fishermen are, uh, buyers are saying they'll buy, don't know how much they're going to pay, don't know how much they're going to take, and don't even think they can buy for the entire season. You have plants that say uh, they're probably not going to bring in foreign workers because they're the volatility in, in the fishing industry. And so then they can only produce between 30 and 50 percent capacity of what they did last year. So we decided to put a, a a paper together that is going to be sent to every fisherman in Gulf of North Ocean, asking them about their opinions, if they would accept it. Uh, parts of it, if I may, uh, one point is to extend their unemployment insurance until the next fishing season without any delay, uh, defer payments and freeze interest rate to existing bank loans, and defer mortgage payments and freeze interest for 12 months. And this would require uh, the government of Canada talking to banks, because uh, I think um, I don't think the Royal Bank wants to end up with 50 boats in their yard. Who are they going to sell to when there's no fishery at all? So I think there's a, an avenue for the banks to be flexible and help their clients. We also want to defer the income tax payments for 2019 for 18 months. Uh, we want to enable harvesters to take out from their RSP up to a maximum of 30000 tax-free. And we want special income tax credits for the upcoming years to stimulate the economy. As you know, when, when we start to recover, uh, it's going to be slow and gradual, and we'll all have to uh, do our part to stimulate the economy. We also want to uh, have an interest-free loan uh, supported by the government up to 20000 for a plus. I want 25% uh, up to 30000 to be non-repayable. We want a rate subsidy of 75% to be in place for fishermen that might actually go fishing in the fall uh, this year if, if the uh, virus settles down. And we also want a uh, non-payment on, on light fees for 2020 because if we don't fish, we don't think we, we should have to pay. So I think that for the federal government should fit in their, their programs. And if it doesn't, then I think they should tweak them uh, to give us something for the uh, the fishery, we're, we're rather unique in the sense that in the lobster fishery here, this area, we have two months, May and June, and then that's it, the year over. With other industries, they could possibly open their door in the fall, hopefully, and gradually start their business up in. Now, we can't do that. So, therefore, we need something that's unique, that's different, and that uh, will fit our our. Our fishery. You were you were talking about the the Canada Emergency Response Benefit and the the one the provincial one. Those are not enough for fishermen. Is that right? The Canada Emergency Fund that would only if we went fishing 
and ran out of EI, and that would give us, what, four months at $500 a month, a week, uh, over a month, sorry. And so that is quite insufficient for us. Um, we need a program that would start now, if we're not fishing, we can't wait to start drawing for that fund in December. So it, that, that doesn't fit. Uh, the provincial program, I'm not sure they're tailored for the fishing industry. We've yet to kind of diagnose that one a bit. But one thing the provincial government could do is at the fishery loan board, they could eliminate the interest fees or cost for this year. We found it unreasonable for the provincial government to be making money when the entire industry is in a crisis. Uh, to me, they should be, uh, if they want to help us, they should waive the interest fees for 20, uh, 2020. I wanted to ask you if there's anything that you wanted to add. Well, I, I think, uh, as others have mentioned, I think we have to say thank you to our doctors, our nurses, everybody in the medical field that's still working, taking care of all of us. I think we have to thank the uh, pharmacists, people at the bank, and people at the co-op that every have to go. I have the opportunity to stay home, but I have to uh, eat. And it's uh, very important for those facilities to stay open. Um, and we, I think the whole community appreciates what they're doing for us. And I'm sure it's the same everywhere.